from swords to plowshares. Pink Palace Museum, summer 2013. Incorporates sheet music, trench art, and an exhibit on Sergeant York called In the Footsteps of Sergeant York, put together by the Museum of the American Military Experience. Steps of Sergeant York of the Museum of the American Military Experience. Combat and York's outfit, which was 
G Company, the 2nd Battalion of the 328th Infantry, was given the task of attacking and severing a German narrow gauge railway to the west of the village of Chateau Chehery. The attack started about 6 in the morning. It was really rainy and cold. It was the 8th of October. York's company and his platoon were on the very far left flank of the 2nd Battalion attack. York's platoon sergeant, Harry Parsons, ordered three squads to try to move to the left and silence the machine gun fire from the left flank. And York commanded one of the three squads that went. They surprised the Germans who began to surrender. Other Germans who were manning machine guns further up the slope saw what was happening and turned their guns around and fired on the Americans. And they killed six, instantly wounded three others, including all of the non-commissioned officers except Alvin York. So as the senior non-commissioned officer, he took command of the uh, patrol uh, using his rifle and pistol. He silenced the German machine gun fire. He killed between 20 and 25 Germans. Eventually, uh, because of his accurate fire, the German uh, lieutenant in command surrendered to him. He and the other seven men took their wounded and escorted the prisoners back to the battalion command post, which was a little bit southwest of the village of Chateau, Chenery. And at that point, the prisoners were counted. He had captured 132 Germans. When we got to France, the first time, and uh, also the second time, uh, the French people were curious to see what we were doing. And you know, they, they came out of the woodwork, as it were, to see you know, what are these people doing, and, and, and what's all this equipment they're carrying, and heading off down into the woods down below the town. They were very interested in what we were doing. The current mayor of Chatel is a man by the name of Alain Raquel, who was a policeman in Paris, but he's moved to Chatel. And we met him on the first trip, and he wanted to show us things that he just found. And so, in, in his little shack behind his house, he had the sort of thing we thought we'd find. Technical aids that we have 
This week, I think we have made great achievements and there is hope for many, many people. At the entrance to the exhibit, we found a maximum machine gun. This was located in the Front Pinterest Museum and was reportedly one that was captured by York. It was saved from the scrap drive in World War II. As we uh, turn, the exhibit begins with a description of life in Pall Mall, identifying the Wolf River Valley. York is a wayward son and his redemption. He moves into a panel. He says, you're in the Army. His experience at Camp Gordon as a marksman and uh, description of this life in camp. The next panel moves into Americans in the Great War and the Mizargon experience. The third panel is uh, the 82nd Division flag of the All-American Division. Moving to the left we have the surrender the map of the Argonne Forest, and the picture at the bottom showing Gracie and uh, Alvin. Next, a panel entitled October 8, 1918, pictures of Chatel Sherry, Sergeant York at the site in 1919. And at the bottom, the uh, railroad, which they were trying to break through to. As we turn, we see a panel titled, The Man and the Myth. And of course, at the top is uh, Gary Cooper and Sergeant York, and how we, this is how we remember York. The pictures of um, York through his years on the Cumberland Plateau, and then his latter years in Pall Mall. To the left of that is a model of the site in the Argonne Forest. And in the middle we have some red tacks that show the location of the battle. Move around the corner here. There's much discussion on geographic information uh, systems as a way to study the battlefields. We have maps of the, the Argonne Forest, how uh, the pass is reconstructed using technology, and then Dr. Nolan and his associates as they try to uh, combine special information to uh, determine the location. The exhibit then has the film which you've seen and as we turn three panels to the left of the international team, the people from the United States, France and England, information was gathered from Germany. Next is the landscape's legacy, what we see over there today, and show some finds of the, the exhibition. And then um, York, Tower of the Patrol, and it shows him uh, post-war. As we turn, we see other parts of the overall exhibit, including a huge uh, diorama of uh, a trench scene. And this panel, 
identifies uh, the uh, details of a global positioning system and how GR GPS is used, plus the original equipment that was used as part of the exhibition. As we come to the other side of the panels and towards the end, we focus on the findings and we see uh, a board dedicated to Murray Savage. The um, map, the picture at the top shows the location of his grave. They reinterred the bodies at the Mise Argonne Cemetery, but much of the uh, accoutrements were left in the grave, and many of these are found by this exhibition, and then they are placed in footlockers here to show just an example about what was found. In the next uh, panel, we identify the, the method at which they were digging, the recovery it's called, and um, here we see examples of other artifacts, including the American Railroad Pocket Watch. A, this, from Savage burial site, a knife, the bayonet, part of a U.S. helmet, and then parts of a uh, cartridge belt. Two of the most exciting pieces in this exhibit, which really draw attention to the fact that this was the site, was a collar disc, which states 328G collar disc. And a uh, knife that's identified to the 328G. Two panels, total burst of fire, and speak to the burials. The records. And so details on maps and documentation. Of course, we have two more trunks. Showing the utensils, helmet fragments. Moving over to a Varian support sapper, a rifle boat, a German mess tin room, and more utensils. This picture shows the, the four graves. In the footsteps of Sergeant York, so between 2006 and 2009, an international team of scientists, geographers, historians, and archaeologists conducted these three expeditions in the Argonne Forest of eastern France in search of archaeological evidence related to the World War I combat actions of Calvin Corporal South Alvin York. The exact site of where York won the Medal of Honor, however, was disputed for decades using geographic information systems as the basis for combining archival materials, empirical data, and artifacts, the team was able to locate the battlefield and reconstructed the sequence of events surrounding York's heroics. This exhibit follows in the footsteps of Sergeant York. For more information, contact the Museum of the American Military Experience or see them on Facebook.